Space agencies all over the world have been trying to make progress with space travel for years, but it seems like SpaceX is leading the race. Just recently, the private space venture headed by Musk approved launch for the much-awaited Starship. SpaceX looks set on launching it into orbit later this month. A bit shocking since the spacecraft's testing phase didn't exactly go without a hitch. Here's everything you need to know. Launch systems are a go. Heralding the launch of a new era, SpaceX is busy getting everything ready. The Musk-owned space company is nearing completion on the Starship Florida launch site. They also completed a six-engine status fire test with Ship 24 while also conducting a 33-engine spin prime milestone with Booster 7. To give you some context, the Starship is the leading spacecraft when it comes to interplanetary travel between the planets Mars and Earth. The rocket is set to bring down the cost of space travel, and SpaceX plans to achieve that by designing the rocket in two stages, the Starship itself and the Super Heavy. Super Heavy is the company's most powerful booster to date that promises multiple uses after every time. Last month, Musk tweeted that Starship into orbit is one of his main goals for 2022. Since we are approaching the later months of the year, there is no surprise that the company is hard at work, testing both vehicles and preparing for a launch. Let's take a look at testing. Recently, the Booster 7 was stacked on the Orbital Launch Mount (OLM), setting the stage for a dual test campaign with its partner. With Booster 7 absolutely killing a pair of three-engine spin prime tests, all systems were a go. However, SpaceX did experience some delay after Ship 24 got done with the six-engine spin prime test. Still, as soon as Ship 24 wound up the test, the rocket was hooked up to the company's LR-11000 crane, giving workers access to the vehicle's liquid oxygen tank. The team was trying to address issues that came to light in previous tests. SpaceX had been testing the prototype all the way since April. However, it didn't ignite the engines until August. This was as part of the static fire testing process, a critical test that both vehicles needed to pass in order to be cleared for space flight. Right around the end of August, Booster 7 wound up a three-engine static fire test with another one earlier during the day. However, during the test, one of the three engines aborted right at ignition and didn't fire. Still, the company went ahead and prepared Ship 24 for the six-engine static fire test. How this goes is that the ship is loaded with more LOX than what would typically be needed to work. Ship 24 was prepared this way for the six-engine static fire test, but well into the propellant load, an abort occurred. Later in the week, reports came in about workers swapping one of the rocket's Raptor vacuum engines. At the same time, one of the center engines was also replaced on the Booster 7. We're talking about the engine number 7 here. Of course, this news was met with some speculation since the engine was not even tested during the scheduled tests. SpaceX tweaked and fixed issues with the two vehicles until September 8th. That's when the rockets were tested once more. On September 8th, the rocket and the booster were fired up once more. Booster 7 geared up for a 33-engine spin prime test, while Ship 24 was scheduled for a 6-engine static fire test. The former lasted for about 6 seconds, while the much-awaited 33-engine spin prime test took longer. A previous attempt at the test on July 11th had led to a fuel-air detonation forcing the crew to carry out some much-needed repairs and a redesign of the engine's chill-down procedures. On that note, the new engine chill system employs methane for the process. With the new pipe system, the gas is collected and dumped into a pit somewhere away from the OLM. Some may argue that the new process is not as elegant, but it solves the fuel-air mixture, so why complain? We still don't know if this system will be employed at the actual launch, but it does give SpaceX grounds to move forward with pre-launch testing. Ship 24's tests on September 8th also ended up initiating a grass fire, but the Cameron County fire was able to put it out adequately. Interestingly, they had to light some of the grass ahead of the fire front to remove the fuel, which is standard when it comes to putting out fires like these. SpaceX employees found themselves in similar waters back in July 2019, during Starhopper's 20-meter hop test, but comparing the two fires, 2022 was smaller and contained. Other than the grass issues, the test went according to plan. There were no significant problems except for some tiles falling off the vehicles during the extended test, which isn't too shocking. Vibrations through the whole structure with the rocket fixed to the ground are bound to move the tiles out of their pin sockets. An upgrade to the water deluge system. 
At the same time, SpaceX is working on upgrading the water deluge system at the Starship OLM. New flexible pipes have now been added. The root of this system connects to the iron water pipes that lead to the OLM from one of its legs. It's not yet clear how this upgrade will impact the future testing of the Booster 7 that's currently sitting at the OLM. On that note, the vehicle has entered the new testing phase after it partly cleared off the three-engine static fire test on August 31st as one of the engines aborted at ignition. We don't have the deets on the objectives or the schedule of this new phase, but one thing we do know for sure is that the Booster 7 is heading to more complex static fire tests. And as it does, the team will get the chance to fix any issues that might come up, perfecting the vehicle for the big day. However, it's a long wait before we see that day. Once the vehicle passes this phase of testing, there'll be another where Ship 24 will be stacked on top of Booster 7 for combined tests. We're talking countdown simulations, then a full-up countdown, and then a 33-engine static fire test. SpaceX plans to wind up everything by mid-next month. However, that's if everything goes smoothly. If they encounter any issues, we could be looking at next year for the big launch. Let's take a look at the specs. SpaceX has really outdone itself with the design of both vehicles. The Booster 7 alone is a huge structure, towering at 69 meters, making it as tall as an entire two-stage Falcon 9 rocket. And don't get us started on the engine count and peak thrust, Booster 7 is the first of its kind fitted with new Raptor V2 engines with enough space for 3,400 tons of propellant. The liftoff mess is over 3 million kilograms, which ends up generating a staggering thrust. What's more, the Booster 7 is capable of landings on its own with its six retractable legs, but Musk being Musk, decided to go the extra way and also introduced a pair of arms attached to the launch tower capable of catching the booster on its return to Earth. As for Ship 24, it's a Starship prototype towering at the height of 18 meters. The prototype is a huge improvement from its predecessor with a complete change in ring layout. They've got Booster 8 in the works. SpaceX isn't concentrating all its efforts on the Starship or the Booster 7, for that matter. Booster 8 is in the works for potential testing. Apparently, the team is hoping to launch the second orbital flight sometime after the first one. They're aiming for 30 days. At the moment, the spacecraft is receiving its chines and other systems ahead of cryogenic proof testing scheduled not long from now. We don't know if the testing will happen since the Booster 7 is currently occupying the OLM. The company does have a candidate location in mind. SpaceX recently moved two liquid nitrogen tanks to one of their properties at Massey's Way, which was previously a firing range. For context, liquid nitrogen is used for cryogenic testing. Obviously, two tanks are not enough to test a booster. On that note, Ship 25 was also stacked on September 12th, marking the completion of the primary structure of the ship. Looks like the folks at SpaceX are hard at work. Alright, that's a wrap for today's video. What are your thoughts on SpaceX approving the next phase, even with the problems in the last one? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos. See you in the next one!